I just want to uh, reiterate and welcome everybody, whether you're here now or in the future, which is a weird concept on YouTube. Um, no class Thursday. So if you're not currently in class today on Tuesday, be aware that you uh, are going to be disappointed because nobody will be there at five o'clock on uh, Thursday. For math too? Uh, math as well. Yeah. We're all going to be involved with a graduation. It, we do a graduation the last Thursday in January and the last Thursday in um, August, twice a year. Um, and uh, we have, I think, 27 people walking. We're giving out 13, uh, 13 of those students. So um, literally half, half of those students are going to receive uh, two-year scholarships to PHSC. So uh, it's a pretty awesome opportunity. Um, we're very excited to present those. They don't know that they are coming. Um, they just know that they're going to be walking, getting a high school diploma, and then we'll call them up afterwards with a uh, super surprise. But let's look first um, or focus today on, uh, we are going to look at context clues. All right. So let me share with you. Okay, so, and you can see this or no? Anyone? No. Nope. No. Now? There we go. All right, sweet. Every so often we do something right. All right, so why isn't this watch later thing working? I specifically saved for and uh, it didn't save. Awesome. That's freaking awesome. Okay. So let's look it up again. Yeah, I saved this one. Watch later. Watch later. Watch later. All right. So let's look um, real quick at this one. And then we'll look at another one and then do some practice. The first type is rewording. <laughs> Hello, class. Today we will be learning about context clues. Sorry, I'm late. When you read, you may encounter words that have more than one meaning. You may also find words you have never seen it's before. Kind of funny sounding. We'll switch it. Like a computer oh, sounding. Rock bands. All right, so let's look at this one. Did you ever find yourself in a conversation where you have Thanks, no Jeff. idea what the other person is saying? Maybe it's the person at the car repair place using words like carburetor or camshaft. And you just nod your head and, and know it's going to be expensive. Or maybe you find yourself in a football huddle and Peyton Manning is saying things like bootleg and nickelback. Bootleg and nickelback? Is he talking about smuggling alcohol and Canadian rock bands? No. That seems weird when there's a game on the line. <laughs> maybe you're taking a test and you're supposed to analyze a reading passage, but there's this word that might as well be in Klingon. That's us right here. You have no access to a dictionary. What do you do? Well, we're not going to teach you car terminology. And if Peyton Manning is yelling at you, you're, you're on your own. But we can work on that last situation. It's all about determining the meaning of the word by using context. Context refers to the other words and sentences around the word in question. That's it right there. There are several great methods for using context to figure out what words mean. The first is to look and see if the definition of the word is right there. That's one of them, definition. This can also be a restating of the word. Consider this sentence. While planning the party, Susan was prudent with the guest list. Prudent. Acting with great caution and care not to invite anyone with whom she wouldn't want to jump around in a bounce house. What does prudent mean? In this sentence, the definition of the word is right there. It's defined. Who is being prudent? Susan with what? The guest list. You don't need to know what prudent means to figure that out. And how else is Susan's behavior with the guest list described? She's acting with great caution and care. So what's the definition of prudent? Acting with great caution and care. 
Other times, you'll see examples that help explain the word in question. Similar. This is very similar to finding the definition. Look at this sentence. Devin procrastinated to avoid his homework all day, watching TV, playing video games, and even writing thank you cards to his grandparents. Oh, wow. What does procrastinate mean? This time, it's not defined elsewhere in the sentence, but we do have examples of what it means. Avoiding. Watching TV, playing video games, and writing thank you cards are all forms of procrastination. If Devin should be doing his homework, but he's doing these other things instead, then procrastination must mean delaying or putting off. Mm -hmm. Now, those examples helped us figure it out. Maybe you're thinking, those are two methods, but I want more. Give me more. Okay. Sometimes you'll see a synonym or antonym nearby. A synonym is another word that means the same thing. An antonym is a word that means the opposite. Oh, and you don't even need to know what synonym and antonym mean to use this method. Let's look at some examples. Here's our first one. Mark wanted to impress his date with the dinner he prepared. Ooh. But the massive ice sculpture centerpiece he made with a chainsaw between courses was just superfluous, extra, and unnecessary. Wow, Mark. A for effort. But what does superfluous mean? That's a little extra. There are two synonyms right there. Extra and unnecessary. And guess what? That's the meaning of superfluous. Mm -hmm. Here's another. Priscilla is so humble and modest that she could never be called haughty. What does haughty mean? Again, we have two other adjectives, humble and modest. But notice the context. Priscilla could never be called haughty. Why? Because she's humble and modest. This and time, antonyms. we have antonyms. So haughty is the opposite of humble and modest. Therefore, it means arrogant and pretentious. We've looked at some awesome methods for using context to determine the meaning of words. How about one more? Sometimes, you can use substitution to figure out a word. This involves swapping out the word you don't know for one you do know until it makes sense in context. Here's a sentence. As you might expect, the acid that burned a hole in the table also has deleterious fumes. Deleterious. Okay, what does that word deleterious mean? It's used as an adjective to describe the fumes, but we don't have any synonyms or antonyms, and there isn't a definition or any examples in the sentence. Let's try substitution. What about pleasant? Would that make sense in context? As you might expect, the acid that burned a hole in the table also has pleasant fumes. Hmm. No, burning a hole in the table is bad. Pleasant fumes are good. We wouldn't connect those two things, would we? That's using context. So it's probably bad. What about horrible? As you might expect, the acid that burned a hole in the table also has horrible fumes. Or toxic. Okay, that's closer, but nauseous. it's not quite right. The acid burned a hole in the table, so the fumes are also probably causing harm, right? What about harmful? As you might expect, the acid that burned a hole in the table also has harmful fumes. That's it. That makes sense in context, and deleterious does mean harmful. Whoa! We learned how to use context to determine the meaning of words. We explored several methods for this. First, we looked for the definition of the word in the sentence. Mm -hmm. We then looked for examples in the sentence that may help define the word. When a definition of some sort isn't present, we look for synonyms or antonyms to offer clues for us. Finally, we tried substitution. This involves choosing a familiar word that maintains the original meaning of the sentence. Of course, we weren't able to help with auto shop jargon or- Auto shop jargon. All right, where's the other one I wanted? Maybe, maybe that's it. Oh no, this guy. All right, so this is a little more of a visual. We're going to buzz through it. Vocabulary, context. In this lesson, we'll be exploring how to identify the meaning of a word by using the sentence or passage that the word is located in. We will also explore the different types of context clues that authors use to help readers define words. If we were asked to define the word abrogate, Whoa. chances are that we might not be able to do it. However, if I put the word into a sentence, there's a high probability that we would be able to come up with a definition that is close to the meaning. When we're able to define a word based upon the sentence it's located in, it's called defining by context or using context clues. Mm -hmm. Good readers do not spend time looking up words in dictionaries. 
Indeed, individuals with very large vocabularies typically acquire their vocabulary through reading many books and defining words using context. Let's see if we can figure out what abrogate means based upon the context of the following sentence. King George tried to abrogate the work of the Continental Congress by repealing or canceling many of the laws that Congress enacted. This particular sentence gives some hints about what the word might be. Get in the way? See if you can pick them up. When I read the sentence, two words stick out to me, repealing and canceling. In my mind, I'm thinking to myself, if King George was repealing or canceling the laws that Congress was writing, then to abrogate the work must mean to prevent or stop it. I want to make sure that I've got it right. So I go back and I reread the sentence with one or both of the substitute words in, in the sentence to see if it works. King George tried to prevent or stop the work of the Continental Congress by repeal, repealing or canceling many of the laws that Congress enacted. It seems to work. If I were to look up the word in a dictionary, I would discover that the word abrogate means to revoke. So I wasn't that far off. I defined the word without needing to stop reading and look the word up. So why context clues? Why not just look up the word's meaning in a dictionary? Because that would take a lot of time. Anytime we interrupt the flow of information going into our minds, whether it's due to something distracting us or stopping to look up a word in the glossary of the dictionary, we lose concentration, which impacts our comprehension. It also takes us longer to read. By using context clues, we save ourselves time. Save We're able time. to remain focused while we this. read and increase our working vocabulary at the same time. When we define a word based upon sentence or the sentence or passage it appears in, we actually learn both what it means and how the word it All right, examples, so the types here. synonyms, antonyms, and inferences. We're going to explore each one of these in more detail. Let's start with definition. This is the easiest of all the types of context clues, as the author gives you the definition to the word right after the word. All right, so I'm going to send this, the rest of this to you. Let's look real quick on a stop sharing. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, Kane, if you, I saw your little, uh, thing. If you want to stay after, we'll get, we'll get you set up, okay? Let me uh, share this image with you guys. I'm going to give you guys this. I like it's color-coded. Um, this is all four of those, or five, excuse me, broken down. So the five types of context clues, you're going to use this as like a cheat sheet. So if you want to, I'm going to send it to you digitally, but if you want to um, print it out or, or whatever you want to do with that. So we look at explanation definition. We are only talking about this word habdashery, which is a fancy word, like a boutique is for a lady. It's a guy's version of a boutique. Um, so it's not that very difficult. It's not a word that we see too often, um, but I want to show you these context clues in, or good examples of these context clues having to do with, the, with this word habdashri. So the example here, okay, is a explanation or definition. So habdashri, uh, which is a store that sells men's clothing is becoming more and more common today, okay? So that habdashri is literally defined right here, which is a store that sells men's clothing, okay? Um, I'm highlighting getting it apart, apparently. Another one is restatement or synonym. So Lou was sent to the Habdashri to find a new, uh, new suit. He went to wear one of his, uh, he went, he needed to wear one for his uncle's wedding. Because the sentence says that Lou would find a suit at the Habdashri, then you must uh, be a place where clothes for men are sold, okay? So for a new men's suit okay he wasn't looking for a lady suit next one okay contrast or antonym uh we look at kind of the opposite so lou wanted to go to the habdashri but Anne, we can assume she's a female i know it's 2021 and we can't assume anything anymore but let's look at this and just assume that she's a female wanted to shop at the boutique so the boutique is the contrasting word to habdashri and the contrast between Lou and Anne is different genders, right? So we can assume that boutique is for females and habdashri is for males. 
um, the signal, the signal word, but, okay, uh, tells the reader that it's the opposite. Then we can, for inferencing, we can uh, move on to that for inferencing and we can look at something as implied or apparent. So the habdashery was Lou's favorite place. Lou, we can assume is a dude uh, and it's his favorite place. Uh, he loved shopping there, okay? So we can assume he's buying, shopping for nice suits, okay? The people who work there were so kind and helpful. Okay, we have to infer that he's a male shopping at a place where men can buy um, clothing, okay? The next one is punctuation. This kind of functions, I think, exactly like, in my book, like definition or explanation. It's just how it's written there. So we use parentheses. We're using uh, italicized word. There's a definition enclosed in there, uh, okay? So Tom's father was a habdasher, Okay, that's a person who works at a haberdashery or owns one, I guess, or a men's shopkeeper. So that's literally defined there, okay? Uh, then Tom's father was a haberdasher, i.e. a men's shopkeeper. That's defined there as well. In the story, Tom's father was a haberdasher or men's shopkeeper. We have a dash. I don't know why it won't let me highlight just that, but we have the dash there. And then Tom's father was a habdasher. He had cl a clothing store for men just defined there with a whole nother sentence. So this is a cool cheat sheet to have when you're working on, let me show you some of the stuff I'm going to send to you. So we'll look at, um, this is context clues. It's the same idea, okay? And then you could, uh oh, what's happening here? All right, then you could bring along, um, some of these practices, okay? Some easy ones here, Willie Mammoth, are they extinct or not? You would read that passage and um, define some of these words. Uh, that's the one we just looked at. Same idea here. There's a lot of practice stuff that I, I'm giving you to either print out or just work on. You can manipulate the text like this, just like I am if you want to. Um, bu -bu 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 that is a passage from Thomas Jefferson, 1776. And these are words that you may not know, and you would theoretically be able to define them or match them up here with these particular, um, particular vocabulary words and definitions. That is the Monday news, which is nothing to do for you. I'll stop sharing and move to the next one. Uh, there's two more I wanted to show you, so you're familiar with them. We didn't go over this, but I will put that in there. This is, again, just a quick PowerPoint on the different types of context clues. Um, pretty easy stuff. Let's let's do some practicing on IXL, though, right now for the, like the next 10, 15 minutes. Sound fun? Everybody says yes. Let's get it. I, I got one who gets extra credit. All right, so which one is this? Okay. All right, so we are, that is my roster. We're gonna cancel that. And I probably need to log in again. I don't, cool. All right, so I'm gonna look at the diagnostic, kind of like put a parenthesis here. Can you see this or not? Showing something weird, black and white, like your URL, URL web. What? It's like a long strip um, That's of a website. And it's, like it's like it's going in and out. So let me stop sharing and let me try to share again. Golly, I love technology. You know how much easier this is in the classroom? So much yeah. beyond easy. Can you see this now? Yes. Yes. Yay. Yes. All right. Sweet. All right. Let me see the diagnostic. Again, if you're new, I need you to go to the diagnostic arena. I got to have you spend, it's between one to three hours on it. Uh, I'm focused more on the language arts, but the math will be helpful as well. When you uh, identify some of these things, you will be able to see your recommended skills for these different skill sets, okay? In math and in- I language already arts. started today. Okay, I will do that. Huh? I already started today. So. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So um, there's no rush, but 
um, the sooner you get to that, the better, because you get these recommended skills. So specifically for this individual, we would do transition and conjunction adju ooh, ad adverbs, that's fun. Um, remove redundant phrases for writing skills and the vocabulary. It was uh, seeing um, an an analogies, excuse analogies. me. Analogies. Uh, and then some more reading context here, okay? Um, use context. That's one we want to actually work on. How's that? That would be fun. All right. So that's the diagnostic arena. I have all, I can see all of what you've done. Okay. Uh, if your name is here, you haven't finished it yet. Okay. So let's get that finished. And if you're here, you haven't started it yet. So let's get that started, please. All right. So, um, all right, let's go to Learning. Where is my context clues? Oh, vocabulary. I'm in math. I don't want to be in math. Ugh, I saw math. No, thank you. Where is my context clues? All right, bingo. Context clues is in the vocabulary section. Again, if you hit reading, it goes to reading. If you go, it goes to writing. If you go back, or you can just scroll. The vocabulary, I'd like you to spend a lot of time there. We'll, we'll go over prefixes, suffixes, those kind of things. So let's pretend we're in third grade, and this might be some of your level, might not be some of your level. We're going to go through these three real quick and get the idea. I know we want to start low, warm up, kind of warm your brains up, or just like if you were working out at the gym, you want to warm your muscles up, or you're going to go play a soccer game or whatever, you wanna warm uh, yourself up, we'll do that mentally as well. All right, so determining the meaning of a word, you're using synonyms specifically. Why is that being weird? Okay, synonyms. So, Sasha is studying for the big uh, math exam on Tuesday, pretend we don't know exam. She loves math and is sure she will do well on the test. What's our synonym word for exam? Test. Test. Bingo. Bango. Got it. Submitted. All right. So we know that Sasha is studying for the big exam on Tuesday. She loves math and is sure she'll do well on the test. The test, uh, what do we determine? The, what is the meaning of exam? Answers to hard questions, classes that teach people new things, or questions that see what people know. What is an exam? See. C, bingo, bango, Marsh, got it, hit it, home run. All right, okay. Stacy was feeling cheerful as she got up and went downstairs. She was happy because she was going to the water park that day. What is our synonym word for cheerful? Happy. Yeah, we're pretending we don't know cheerful, so happy. Because you know she's feeling something and then she was happy, we know feeling is a happy or happiness is a feeling, excuse me. <laughs> Terrific. So we are moving on to define cheerful. Is it content or full of joy or curious and eager to know or sick and unwell? Content, content full of joy. Yeah. So, and if you wanted to check yourself, you could always go, oh, Stacy was feeling curious and eager to know as she got, that does, you can't even finish the sentence with that. Okay. So that's a dumb one. This one, you could say Stacy was feeling sick or unwell as she got up and went downstairs. She was happy. Are you happy when you're sick? No. Not no. usually. Not that I know of. All right, next one. Jamal. Jamal is quite tall and lean, just like his father. As a matter of fact, everyone in Jamal's family is quite slender. Lean. Yes, lean. Oh, that's brilliant. Very good. So we can assume that slender or lean means thin, thin. average, thick. Thin. Yes. And if you were to substitute those in, you could check your answers, just like, I guess, in math. Uh, last night, my younger brother whined all through dinner. When mom asked him to finish his carrots, he complained even more. Complained. Complained. Yeah, so wine is complained. We submit that. We're getting a good work. Wine means grumbled or cried, continued or wouldn't stop, or drank and eat and ate. Grumbled or cried. 
I guess some of these substitutions would be right. Last night, my, my brother drank and ate all through dinner. When mom asked him to finish his carrots, he complained. Well, that doesn't make sense if he drank and ate the whole time. <laughs> or um, right. brother continued or wouldn't stop. That's not the best answer. Our best answer is grumbled and cried. Wonderful. All right, so let's go to the next HH2. So do we level up? No, we don't want to jump a level. We're going back here. Going to go to HH2. Using context to identify the meaning of a word. Okay, this is where you guys come in. Help me read these things. They're so much fun. We're having like a ridiculous amount of fun. We're going to need a sedative. <laughs> All right. So help me out with this one. No other living. No other living things talk the way people do. Amen. But after babies are born, it takes many months before they can speak. For the first few weeks, they mostly cry. After a few months, after a few months, though, they'll probably start to jabber. At this point, they are they are just learning to make sounds and having fun. The baby's throats and mouths are getting used to working. Uh, the babies are also hearing what other people are saying. They'll start saying back what they hear. They might make sounds that are almost words. They then one day they'll finally put it all together and they'll be talking. Yeah, so basically you are mute for a little bit and you just cry. Then you move through and you have a little jabber, which we're gonna find out what that means. And then you move on and you start repeating people like a bird does. And then uh, you start making some more sounds and then you put it all together and you're uh, a speaking person, jabber. Does that mean scream and shout loudly? Nope. No. I mean, Talk maybe if you read the first part and you said they mostly cry and then after a few months they scream and shout loudly, maybe. Sleep for many hours? No. No. We're talking about verbalization here. Talk uh, a lot without making sense? Correct. Yep. Yes. yes. Or chew Just on soft good. things? No. No. Talk, Talk a lot. A lot. I think it's actually this one, scream and shout loudly. No, it's talk a lot without making sense. Yeah, you got two, two okay ones. Let's see what we got though, okay? Fantastic, you guys win. Jabba Jabba. All right, so we are looking at a section of the text or a selection um, uh, from the paragraph that helps you understand jabber, which means talk a lot without making sense. They may be, uh, there may be more than one choice, okay? So, um, oh, so I don't know, maybe this one, jabber, the throats and mouths are getting used to working. Nope, why'd I get it wrong? Which one is it? Help me out here. What's a better section maybe. here? At this point, they're just learning to make sounds for fun. Okay, that was better. It makes sense to be more around it. Okay, so when people think about Japan, the city of Tokyo often comes to mind. Tokyo, Japan's capital, is one of the largest cities in the world. Many of the world's cars, televisions, and phones are made there. You can find big crowds and the latest fashion throughout the city, but Japan offers more than just the city of Tokyo. The country has many places where people can find serenity, beautiful forests, Mountains, uh, gardens, castles offer a break from noisy uh, rushing city life. So serenity, we can assume we're trying to do a synonym here. Serenity is peace, peace. wisdom, advice, or riches. Peace, peace, peace. peace. It's not riches peace. because there's probably more money in the city. Advice, mm -hmm. I don't really get that from it. Wisdom, maybe. Mm -hmm. What's our better answer though? That's the problem with test taking sometimes. You might think wisdom and that's awesome and that might be a partially right, but you're looking at your best answer. Let's see if peace is right. Terrific, sweet. Now we're looking at the section that helps us understand that serenity means peace, okay? So the country has many places where people can find serenity, beautiful forests, mountains, uh, gardens, castles offer a break from noisy rushing 
Uh, I think that last sentence. That part, that part, right. yeah. So we'll click it, we'll click it and tick it and let's see if we get a ticket. Terrific, very good. All right, so somebody want to help me with the vulture? No one? Anyone? The vulture is a large bird with an unusual diet. Humans generally avoid eating spoiled food, but to a vulture, nothing is better than a large helping of ro rotting meat. You. Oh. <laughs> they will gather around a dead animal and eat it with gusto. Scientists aren't sure why, but vultures don't get sick from eating spoiled meat. Hmm. It may be that something in the vultures' bodies keeps them healthy. Whatever it is, it lets vultures do an, an important job, sorry. They get rid of wormy, rotten stuff that could make people ill. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, roadkill. Yeah. They're always around roadkill. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's all yeah. the stomach acid. They will gather around a dead animal and eat it with gusto. Mm. Gusto. gusto. Shyness? No. Wisdom, enjoyment. Enjoyment or humor? Enjoyment. enjoyment. Yeah. We're going to go with enjoyment. Very gross. Yes, very much so. Um, all right. So we're looking at a section that helps us understand gusto. So... The um the top one, the, um nothing better than a large helping of rotting. Yes, nothing better than a large helping. Yeah, of yeah. There's they're doing a lot of research on these actually to see like the stomach acid, the blood, what and and looking into how how people are or how they're not getting sick eating rotting things and how that might uh, help out with things like disease and cancer and things like that. It's very interesting stuff. They're still yeah. disgusting. Uh, animals for sure though let's submit it keep it up buttercup sweet harry houdini was famous for his escape tricks uh he could mm -hmm. escape after being tied up with ropes and handcuffs he traveled the world doing his act in one trick his feet were tied together and he was uh he was hung upside down in a full tank of water in front of big crowds houdini always managed to get out people couldn't figure out how he did it in germany the police said Houdini, Houdini was a sham. So he agreed to test and prove his act was real. Houdini Fake. allowed the police to put him in chains and handcuffs. And then in front of 300 police officers, he freed himself. So we're trying to understand here in Germany, the police said he was a sham. He was a fake. fool, he was a hero, fake. troublemaker or fake. I think fake is our fake. best. Uh, best answer okay brilliant all right what sentence helps us understand the word sham meaning fake the best mm -mm. trick in one trick no one trick. people couldn't figure out how he did it yeah let's do that one let's see sorry Oh, so we agree. Okay, so because oh. they thought he was a sham, I think ours works too. Not, I'm telling you, IXL is not perfect. Um, but yeah, that's all right. What is oh, the answer? Because they said the to answer prove. is um, is the one right after it. In Germany, people said Houdini was a sham, so he agreed to test and prove. It's I guess the, oh. to prove to yeah. prove he was real. Part, yeah. Prove his yeah, act was right. real. Wow. Yeah. It's an antonym here, real versus sham. Sham, yeah. It's a shame he's a sham, but he's real. <laughs> All right, let's do one more and we'll call it. Abraham Lincoln was a president of the United States in the 1860s. He worked hard to hold the country together during the Civil War. Uh, Lincoln appears somber in many pictures. Uh, taken when he was president, but Lincoln actually had a great sense of fun and loves jokes. Sometimes he told funny stories to make an important point. Other times they were just for laughs. Some people didn't like his stories, but Lincoln said that making up stories helped him think. Somber, we're looking, okay. Lincoln appears somber in many pictures. Serious, tall, silly, or smart? Silly. Serious. Serious. 
So yeah, because he's doing silly things, it's kind of an antonym thing. So he worked hard to hold the country together. He appears somber in many pictures. This is where you get the but Lincoln actually. So but Lincoln actually, that whole section there. So it is um, serious. 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 Oh, okay. Okay. Somber means serious, but why do we know that? I think what I just said, but. The antonym, but. Yeah, yeah. but Lincoln actually Ooh. had a great sense of fun and loved jokes. Oh, yeah. Even, even when he was dealing with Martha. All right, so <laughs> I am um, stop sharing. We have six minutes before you go uh, to math. Please. I have, huh? I have a question with all these, this email that you sent us about all these attachments. Yeah. Are they work for us to do and send back to you or? Just just like anything else in this class, um, if you send it back to me, I can check it or whatever. But for the most part, it's a suggestion. Hey, if you want more practice on this item, if you've already got it, awesome. Um, but I, I just want to give you kind of the tools. Um, I'm going to actually send you like 10 different files um, tomorrow morning having to do with um, the context clues. So like anything else, you don't have to do New ZLA, you don't have to do IXL, but what you put into this class is what you get out of it. I think when you add the IXL to it and use that cheat sheet, um, you kind of get a whole rounded like lesson and practice. So the more that you put into it, um, definitely the better you're going to, better outcome you're gonna have as well as um, spending the time and effort and even the money to do the um, official practice test is pretty huge. Um, remember that if you put 50 off, I'll write that here for everyone. 50 off is the code for 50% off at um, uh, GED.com. So if you don't have a login to GED.com, you need to get one, you need to get going. Okay. Because some of you, uh, as you uh, shared today, quite a few of you have a login, have taken multiple sections of the GED practice test or what they call the GED ready mm -hmm. test uh, and um, have likely to pass. And you're going to go ahead and take those and you're going to pass them. Okay. So again, we love that you're in class, but we want to see you walk across the stage in our next. Uh, are the, sorry. Are the tests online or do we go to the school to take them? The school. For okay. the practice test? No, yeah. for the actual one. For the actual test, unless you have accommodations to take it at home. I know they're doing that. GED is doing that. I actually had a student um, who was in here before pass all four sections and had to take it at home, but you have, there's like a proctor that watches you take it. And if anybody yeah. enters the room or goofy things like that, you will, it, it gets canceled in. Um, but we do have, um, we, are, we, we are servicing for GED tests. Um, even during the COVID we were doing that. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. Right. Um, with the practice test, Mr. Mr. Turner, um, the one, the social studies one that I just got a 137 on. Uh -huh. um, can I like read, can I redo that or I have to buy it again? I think you have to pay for it again, but if you pay for it by itself or if you know you want to take all of them over again, you can, uh, you can buy one by one. And if you use the 50 off, you, it should be three bucks per, per yeah. deal, okay? Now, um, you can also look, and I have, um, and I can talk about that or send that to you as well. We have a study book uh, that we have in class, like a student workbook that has to do with the results of those practice tests to, to like kind of narrow your specific studying. Um, so I can help you out with that as well. Okay. Alrighty. So you have two minutes. You got to go to math. So no, I, I, no, I don't want to go. I don't, I, I wouldn't either. <laughs> All right, my friends. All right, Turner, you want to just uh, email me that ELA? Yeah, so you should be able to, if you follow that um, login directions from that email, you should be able to create your own login 
and just utilize the same login that you have um, for IXL so you have the same for both. Okay. All right. So just if you want to look back at that email, if you need me to send that to you again, I will. Yeah. Can you send it to me again? Yeah. All right. I'll send you that email tomorrow morning. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. All right, my friends. Have a good one. Have a good, good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, guys. Have a good one.